what organs can be affected by scoliosis. Scoliosis is when there's an unnatural sideways bending curvature. The scoliosis typically twists and rotates into the concavity of the scoliosis. Being diagnosed with scoliosis is being, means being diagnosed with a progressive condition. It's in its very nature to worsen over time, hence the importance of proactive treatment in response to this diagnosis. Scoliosis can range from mild to moderate to severe to very severe, and what every severe scoliosis has in common is that it was once mild and it progressed to the severe range over time. The severity of the scoliosis is determined by something called a patient's Cobb angle measurement. This measurement is determined during a scoliosis x-ray, and it's typically measuring the most tilted vertebra on the top of the curvature to the most tilted vertebra on the bottom of the curvature, and it's expressing it in degrees. The more severe the scoliosis, the higher the Cobb angle measurement will be, the more noticeable the effects are likely to be. Now, in adults who have scoliosis that's compressing over time, the main effect tends to be pain. And when the patients experience back pain, it's typically in the low back, that it typically affects the legs, but it could be thoracic, if it's a thoracic scoliosis or mid-back scoliosis, it could affect the ribs or mid-back. And if it's a scoliosis up to the neck, it can affect the shoulders and arms and hands. And then they experience pain in those areas. In children, the most noticeable symptom is postural changes. This means that there's uneven forces that occur throughout the body, and this uneven forces can disrupt the body's overall symmetry, meaning shoulder level, hips, development of a rib arch, asymmetrical rib cage. Additional uh, effects could also be uh, disruptions to balance, coordination, and gait. Now, these are the most common effects that occur in, in children and adult, but one thing we have to consider is that since the spine is affected, patients get concerned about organ involvement. Now, organ involvement is not a common effect with scoliosis, but it can be it can be associated with complex scoliosis conditions and ones that are left to severe to very severe and that are left untreated over time. Now, we know scoliosis is a structural problem. And in many cases, the organs just typically adjust to the development of the scoliosis because the majority of the time, scoliosis is developing in adolescence while patients are growing and developing. And since the spine is developing this curve and the, the body is also growing and developing at the time that they just grow around the spine, I guess you would say. And therefore, as this condition progresses and it gets bigger, the body just grows around it and the organs are not affected in any negative way. However, if the curve becomes severe enough and the uneven forces increase enough, sometimes can be uh, they can affect the organs in a negative way because it's affecting the surrounding areas. Now, when we look at organs, the most commonly uh, associated organ that could be affected by scoliosis is your lungs. And a lot of times, uh, patients have been told that if a curve hits a certain size, it's going to affect the lung and cause it a lung failure. And I understand that this is not a common effect. And in fact, the only way to know if the lungs are being affected in any negative way is to have a pulmonary capacity test or a functional lung capacity test to see if the lungs are being affected. It's not, we can't just say at this degree, this is when the, uh, it's going to affect your lung. We've had patients that have had uh, lung capacity tests done at with smaller curves, 50, 60, and have no effect. And we have other patients go in there with the 50, 60, have some effect. We have had patients going with 80 cur degree curves with no effect. Other patients with 80 degree curves have a significant effect. So the only way we know it's the person themselves. But we do know that the more, the, the larger the curve becomes, the more likely something like that can happen. Now, when we look at a severe scoliosis curve that affected the that affects the rib arch, it can affect the position of the rib cage. And these rib cage, we know, protects your lungs. And once the rib cage changes its position, it can affect the space for the lung to develop. Now, what we think happens is it develops in a different position. So you can imagine that the the area for the lung is just altered and the lung grows into a different position. So we don't, we don't know if the space actually decreases because the volume of the area stays the same. It just changes its shape. In severe cases, and in cases that develop in the adult form into the severe range, it can affect lung function more likely because it's developing without the body's ability to adapt during growth. 
Um, also, we know even in severe cases that may affect lung function, we do, we think that the most likely that it's unnoticeable. We consider a functional loss that patients won't even know the difference, even if they have it, because most patients don't lose 100% of their lung capacity on a day-to-day basis. Only patients that are, are likely to feel it or notice something are patients that put a higher demand on a- than average on their respiratory systems. These are like professional athletes, long distance runners, and those kinds of things. But we have to understand, like one of the, one of the greatest runners in the world, Usain Bolt, had a significant and it's severe scoliosis, and he was very functional with his lung function. So again, this is not something that we can say that every patient with scoliosis is going to have this problem. It is unique to that person. Now, when we look at scoliosis, which type of scoliosis is most likely to affect the lungs? These scoliosis typically are going to be ones that affect a certain area of the spine. We know the spine is divided up into three main sections, the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine. The thoracic spine is the one that's most likely to affect the lung tissue, and this is a a scoliosis that occurs in that area. Now, what's interesting is that another organ that could be affected is really your your digestive system, and especially in lower older adults, when they're if the lumbar curve progresses, it shortens the space between the rib cage and the pelvis, and it compresses everything into this lumbar in this lumbar area, and it can lead to digestive distortion if it progresses in later stage life. Now, this doesn't typically occur in younger patients, but it can occur in older patients. And again, that could be a concern because as everything is kind of like attached to the spine and being suspended from the spine, as as the person kind of compresses this, this, you know, core area, you would say, the space or their waist between the ribs and their pelvis, everything compresses and moves down with it. And this can lead to sluggish digestive function, colon function. It can also lead to prolapses and and things that not being suspended properly. So maintaining the integrity or the height of your spine is something that's very important, even in the adult form. So again, even though lung function is the one that we're most commonly as- or we're concerned about, it's not common a common complication of scoliosis, but it can occur in severe cases, especially ones left untreated. In adult patients, what we're concerned about is that the curves are progressing. It can lead to digestive dysfunction if left untreated. And again, it's more likely to cause symptoms as curves get bigger. This is why we definitely recommend early treatment, treating curves the minute you find them, because if you treat the curve when it's smaller and keep it in its model form, it's much less likely to lead to this organ dysfunction and organ malfunction. This thing just doesn't occur in small curve sizes. We don't see these things. So here at the Scoliosis Resurrection Center, we work on preventing progression by decreasing the curve size, therefore decreasing the likelihood of potential complications like lung impairment, digestive function that occurs when curves progress to severe levels. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.